Now let's move on and talk about Hyper-V Manager, the primary tool that you'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis to manage your new Hyper-V infrastructure. Hyper-V Manager is a Windows application that will be installed along with the Hyper-V role when enabled on a Windows Server 2012 server. I'll show you how it works in just a minute, but first let's talk about using Hyper-V Manager remotely. So when I say remotely, I'm talking about running Hyper-V Manager on a system other than the Windows Server 2012 host where the Hyper-V role has been enabled. You can run Hyper-V Manager remotely on a Windows 8 client that has the Hyper-V role installed. You could then use that Hyper-V Manager to manage Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V hosts. You could also install the Remote Server Administration Toolkit, RSAT, on Windows 8, even if you hadn't enabled the client Hyper-V role. You can use System Center 2012, which is Microsoft's centralized management tool for managing multiple Hyper-V hosts, or you could use PowerShell, both of which I'll talk about in just a second. Now let's go over to Hyper-V Manager on the Hyper-V server that we recently installed. I'm here on host Hyper-V1 at the Wired Brain Coffee Company, which we recently installed, and by default the Server Manager dashboard comes up here in Windows Server 2012. Now there's actually a few different ways to access the Hyper-V Manager. You can go up here to Tools inside Server Manager, if it's already up, and go down to Hyper-V Manager. You can go over here to the Hyper-V role, and there's our Hyper-V host. I can actually right-click on it, and I can go down. I can start Hyper-V Manager here, or I can go down to the Start menu, and then notice the Hyper-V Manager icon here. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and bring up Hyper-V Manager. Now notice on the left-hand side here that Hyper-V Manager is running, and we've got one Hyper-V host here, Hyper-V1. If I right-click on the Hyper-V Manager here, I could say I wanted to connect to another Hyper-V host. So I could actually manage multiple Hyper-V hosts from a single Hyper-V Manager tool running locally on the Windows Server system or remotely on a Windows 8 client that has the Hyper-V role enabled or the Remote Server Administration tools. So if I select the Hyper-V server that's local to us, which we've installed, notice here in the center I've got information about the virtual machines. Of course at this point we haven't yet created any virtual machines, which we'll be doing in the next lesson. Here we've got information about snapshots for the virtual machine that's selected, and then more detailed information about the virtual machine. What you'll spend most of your time doing is using the actions over here on the right hand side. And these actions are contextual, meaning depending on what you select over here on the left hand side or which virtual machines you select, these actions will change. For example, right now because I've selected the Hyper-V host, I've got information here on creating new virtual machines, new hard disk, and new floppy disk. I also have actions here that I can perform to import new virtual machines, configure this Hyper-V server's settings, configure virtual switches and virtual networks, use the virtual storage area network manager, edit virtual disk, inspect virtual disk, stop the Hyper-V services on this host, remove the server, or refresh my view. On this actions menu, the most logical thing that you would do as a new Hyper-V admin is to go in here and to create a new virtual machine on the Hyper-V host so you can really get started taking advantage of Hyper-V. Of course, as I said, we'll be doing that in the next lesson. So now let's go in and let's check out this server's Hyper-V settings. Inside the Hyper-V settings, this is where you would configure things like the default location for virtual hard disk for each of the virtual machines on this host, virtual machine configuration files, advanced performance features like NUMA spanning, live migration, storage migration, and replication configuration and then default user preferences related to the keyboard and mouse. Since we're using Hyper-V Manager and we're pointing it to this individual Hyper-V host, Hyper-V1, all these configuration settings are set per host. So you would have to go to each host uh, that Hyper-V Manager is communicating with or each host that you have in your data center and make these configuration settings. However, if you had something like System Center 2012, 
you could much more easily manage multiple Hyper-V hosts. If we cancel out of this so that we don't make any changes, something else I want to point out is that all the actions you see on the right are also available up here on the Actions menu drop-down, and Help is always just a click away. If you click the Help button here, this brings up help information for configuring Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V, as well as uh, many online links to Microsoft TechNet. Now, if you were running Hyper-V Manager from, let's say, a Windows 8 desktop that had the client Hyper-V role enabled, or another Windows desktop that had the remote server administration tools installed, administration of this Hyper-V host and its virtual machines would be identical. It's the exact same Hyper-V Manager application. You would just be pointing it from your local computer to this remote Hyper-V host that you're managing over the network using Hyper-V Manager. 